Okay, so here we go. Um, initial idea here uh, as a thought is uh, I'm thinking of just giving in this volume of space, uh, you know, just leave it the way it is more or less without a roof on it. Uh, maybe uh, some kind of uh, a beneficial skybox with the idea that maybe uh, allowing a camera or, or a perspective view or from a spectator view for the cameraman to be able to fly out a little bit to see the entire playing field all at once as to as to what is occurring and uh, maybe use a free camera a little bit more than they normally would as a you know as in you know going into spectator mode and being able to fly around a little bit uh, to see the entire action taking place uh, over the entire map and uh, you know I'll certainly uh, add, do two do two flavors one will be the uh, one will be with and one will be without the roof so of course this is going to have to take into consideration of what we're going to be putting into the background we just don't want a flat background you know maybe an entire maybe a black background but something that you know allows for a contrast that uh, it highlights the playing field more than it does you know running behind somebody always uh, uh, hooking into them and and getting a, a, a view only from that first person perspective so hopefully this will you know allow for a little bit more uniqueness maybe uh, who knows but I'm always the adventurous type I like to do things that you know maybe somebody hasn't really thought of or or you know it's, uh, that makes somebody go hmm you know that's different but anyways let's get on to the task at hand here now my workflow generally is I like to consider myself the world's most dangerous 3d graphic artist I'd like to start throwing things at things at, at you know textures and and, and and geometry into the mix um, in almost a haphazard way and then just make corrections as I as I work along so uh, you'll probably see me make a, a fair number of mistakes this is the way it is really done You'd, you know you don't get that you know you don't get that kind of behind the scenes look of how people actually do work as compared to the types of videos that are put out as um, as product something that you have to buy so uh, this is going to be given away for free so you know <laughs> whatever happens in the background happens so let's get started uh, first of all as you can see it's a very basic and primitive type of environment um, and uh, you know something that you can make quite simple with a few box boxes uh, a little bit of interesting geometry some roots some hiding places we certainly have some room to put in other different uh, uh, elements into this to this environment we could also probably expand it a little bit more by cutting holes into the wall and, and adding in different rooms if we wish but we're going to start by just presenting a idea and then have it you know player tested I will get this uh, uh, at some point, I'll get this out to our QA team and see uh, what they think as far as uh, the idea of, of, a, of a playable environment that, you know, the uh, cameraman can go like this and so forth. But uh, enough to chat. Let's get on with it. <coughs> the, uh, okay, the first tool, obviously, is that we want to examine is the actual mapper itself. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can tackle this. But what I like to do first is to kind of establish... A base working um, uh, platform uh, something that uh, I can start sticking and throwing textures onto it and then making corrections to those uh, to the uh, you know how they uh, sort of made up and match up uh, at the sub object level uh, which is uh, I'll be demonstrating that too as well okay so anyway so let's get on with it uh, the easiest way to get into the mapper is you just select the rollout and then hotkey it by pressing U, which selects the first uh, modifier in the stack, in this case, the unwrap modifier. So we hit that. This gives us the edit tools. There are other ways of applying a UV map, but uh, uh, predominantly, this is what you'll be working in. So this gives us our map on to on uh, setup, and let's take a look and see what it gives us by default. That's pretty brutally ugly. So 
selecting faces, I select uh, uh, Control A to select all, them all, and then I'm just going to hit the planar projection map here to project the UV mapping onto it. Okay, so I'm going to get that out of the way. Oops, let's uh, actually convert that over to an edible quality, and I'll hide that as a selection just to get to saying that it's done. And as we move along, we'll just more and more, we'll just uh, kind of uh, toss this stuff out. Okay, you puts our base on. We hit open up the other modifier. Um, okay, once again, we got a problem here. We can't really use the planar option this time, so I'm just going to hit it with the mapping option uh, and map it out. Uh, as you can see, there's no textures applied to it at the moment, so we get to the checkerboard, but if we don't like that, we can turn it off anytime. Well, okay, I'm going to select one face on this object here. If I press F2 on my keyboard, that highlights the surface that is, uh, that is connected to it, and this gives us the, uh, the uh, mapping, uh, overall mapping dimensions of it. So uh, I'm going to want to stitch these together. Now, in order, what you can do is you go right-click and... Uh, uh, stick, stitch selected, we'll stitch it. I created a hot key, so I just select it and press my A key, which is what's side to uh, to my stitching. Okay, and uh, we're going to do this as tileable. Okay, once we get everything kind of mapped out, created a base texture uh, setup. In other words, what we have left is something that is workable. Then uh, we're going to do some uh, texture remapping so we can decrease the, the total amount of, uh, of texture maps that uh, we'll be uh, throwing, just basically throwing at this. That's going to, and uh, that'll be demonstrated in short order. So we'll go back to UV mapping again, and uh, we do the same thing. As I mentioned, this is going to be, uh, you're going to see all of this from beginning to end so we might get a little bit bored and I'm obviously going to have a bit of fun trying to keep talking at appropriate moments so if things get a little bit silent as I work along then so be it okay we got a nice volume of space there okay let's hide that whoops <laughs> We're into the modifier, so we got to get out of it. Where's that other one I just did? There you go. We'll hide that. And we're just going to keep going along. And, uh, you know, if you're used to UV mapping in something like Radiant, you certainly can use some of the techniques that you do based on, on sub-object selecting. So no one you're probably familiar with being able to select faces and then adding a UV mapper and I'll probably try to demonstrate that as as a comparison so you know there's not much difference in mapping in 3ds max except for the fact you do have a lot more control over how you lay your texturing down and then what you can do with it after you have everything kind of uh, set up we're not going to get too overboard and fine tuning our mesh here or our mapping. Okay, let's select that. Also, I'm going to try to keep each of these sections down to maybe a half an hour to an hour on the outside. Preferably a half an hour. You know, we'll see. I'm personally not too fond of the uh, four-hour tutorial, that you kind of lose focus of the entire project by the time you get to the end of it, and then you have to kind of remember where in the video that particular piece of information is that makes the difference, so you spend more time trying to find the correct information. Okay, getting there. Okay, once again. Okay, we select our modifier. We hit U on the keyboard. That brings up our editor. And we select that. Oops, stop that, go away, thank you. Okay. And Control A, mapping, flatten, mapping. We'll, we'll set that ankle face from 45 down.
Next thing I like about this is the uh, total surface area is normal normalized, meaning that that even connecting it as a single unit like this, all the surfaces are equal to one another as far as uh, as UV mapping spaces goes. Okay, hide selection. Oops, nope, gotta get out of the mapper. Okay, hide selection. And then we got this big, huge outer wall. And uh, we'll obviously want to begin by tiling this. And it's gonna be considerably larger. So we've got that selected. We'll go mapping, flatten mapping. Um, let's see what happens if we just leave it at 45 see it just breaks it up nicely obviously if this was a, more of a soft body type of uh, uh, surface uh, we're going to get a lot of interconnecting uh, types of, uh, of uh, mapping connected to one another and as you can hear there's a plane flying by maybe maybe not oops It's going to take a little bit more time. There's a lot more sides to this. The whole idea about this is just to kind of create a working base. Something that it, we can be a bit more destructive and then later on, we can remap everything to whatever to whatever we desired. Now, once we get to remapping, that's a kind of an interesting technique in that you don't really have to worry at this stage. Once we start texturing, of uh, maintaining, uh, you know, the requirements, as in, you know, all map texture maps must be a power tool, two tool, <laughs> two. Um, and uh, to kind of explain that a little bit more, um, by power tool that two, that's uh, five uh, things like five uh, five twelve by five twelve, ten twenty four by ten twenty four, five twelve by ten twenty four, anything that is a power value of two. Uh, the reason you want to stick with that is anytime you go outside or in or inside that dimension, it kind of rounds it out anyways. So if you use an off value number uh, as to the total amount of surface area that your texture has, uh, you could land up in uh, overstretching your textures unknowingly. So you could have this really nice texture that you set up and then you it's not to the power to and uh, you go to uh, export the engine and the engine decides it's going to render it at that, at that value and next thing you know you've got some really unusual stretching going on. Okay, let's, un let's uh, get out of the isolation mode. I I think for, for purposes of the tutorial here, I keep going into isolation. Why do I keep doing that? I want unhide all. There we go. That's better. Now we've got uh, hmm, we've got some Z fighting going on there. I must have some sort of copy. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay, I see. That's... Uh, that's what's what's what <clears throat> okay originally I just used the cap uh, feature to cap off the floor uh, as an explanation here because it's uh, it's something that's going to hit you if you don't manage the uh, manage the division of the floor tiling in uh, in a proper manner and the uh, issue that you're going to run into <clears throat> is the light mapper when you use the compiler only maps uh, a certain amount of space like you know, 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024. So if a flat surface, let's hide this. So if a flat surface like this, which has no, as you can see, has no edge connections throughout the plane, it creates a, a large surface area. Now using the idea of one unit equals one inch, the, this entire floor itself is probably much too large for the light mapper to just do it as one big chunk. That's what it's going to try to do. It's going to look at it and see where it can do its division based on, on the edges. Uh, since it can't see the edges, it's just going to try to light map this entire section as 
uh, in one big bite. And what normally occurs when that happens, if it's outside its mapping dimensions, is this will usually rendered as black in in the game. So if you use too much surface area and you don't see the texture and it's rendering black, then you know you have to kind of subdivide it a bit more, uh, similar to this idea. Okay, so anyways, I uh, guess that's uh, somewhat uh, sets uh, up things here for the next uh, battle plan. We have plenty of surface area here to work with, and we can start applying uh, textures as, as a base. So um, to kind of demonstrate yet another tool, one of my favorite tools is uh, a little texture manager here. This is uh, Thumbs Plus Pro. It's well worth the price, which allows you to view various different textures, be it TGA, uh, JPEG, uh, or whatever. But uh, 3ds Max supports a drag and drop feature, uh, depending on whatever um, texture editor or uh, management system that you wish, and then you can just kind of drag and drop stuff onto uh, onto directly onto your uh, surface there without, and let Max handle all the sorting. You know where the, the material goes, what material type it needs to use. It generally does that all automatically, and it usually assigns it to um, to a standard material type. So if you plan on doing something a little bit more advanced, say for example, uh, using Metal Ray to generate um, your own bait uh, lighting solutions, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more once we get into how we're going to want to, you know, take control over how lighting affects the the, uh, the interior space, as well as how breaking a map up like this. Uh, UV mapping an entire volume of space is not the most efficient, so I would highly recommend it if you do want to use this technique that it should be used on smallish type arena maps because you can produce some spectacular results through brute force even in a rather archaic engine design that will be pretty darn close to if not on par to most of the uh, uh, top triple A games. So moving forward just to kind of demonstrate it, I'm just going to grab a texture here and throw it on there. And you can see, boom, it textures it right off the back. But we don't necessarily want to use this texture here because it's a, <laughs> it's a facade image. And uh, what I want to do is start setting up a base uh, by searching around. This is where we're going to start coming, getting into the humming and the hawing aspect of it all. So I'm going to try to keep you know I don't really want to get on screen do this on screen mm. okay I do have a concrete texture to start with okay so we'll give it a concrete floor to begin with and uh, looking at it uh, we want to kind of find something that's going to give us a sense that we do have a good scaling going on here so we do see some kind of stretching going on here so we can sort of play around with it. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, for some reason or another, my uh, mapping really didn't turn out all that well. There seems to be some sort of double facing going on. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Okay, I think we're, we are, we want to look for a roundish material. Now, I should use Blade Killer's secret, super secret uh, texture map. She's got a really beauty that she made up that really tells you if you're over distorted or not. Okay, anyways, we'll just convert this over to a poly. We can always add the edit mesh all anytime we want. We'll turn off the grid because we don't want to see it. And uh, ta-da, we have a floor. <coughs> okay, so let's uh, tra tackle uh, something a little bit bigger here. Let's uh, go with the wall. We'll make the interior kind of a kind of a um, uh, concrete slash um, a concrete slash uh, uh, plaster paint. You know, we'll get some blood splatters going all over the place and what have you. 
and by looking at this I can see that my texture map is actually upside down so we open the editor I'll just do a control A and I'll use the flip tool here to kind of spin it around I want to get this so it's using as much of that texture as possible Actually, let's do it this way. We'll convert this over to an edible poly because it didn't snag the material type. We'll unwrap it again. We'll open it in the editor. And this time when we select here, we'll have, be able to select our concrete uh, material and see exactly where we want that to begin and end. Yeah, we're pretty good there. Maybe a little, eh, well, a little bit more on the bottom. This is actually a really nice texture. It's one of my favorites as far as uh, starting with a base and start mixing things up and uh, we'll be demonstrating how to blend in different textures and then how it all comes together when we get to uh, to uh, remapping all of our uh, items here okay yeah uh, time wise we're doing well okay <coughs> see what we have so far as to as to other textures that uh, I have located in other places I think uh, mm -hmm. mm. if I get too hummy and hawy I'll uh, I'll put it on pause so I can figure out where where things are I apologize for not showing you how I am managing the editor because if you know basically I'll be giving you a grand tour of my hard drive and that is not a good idea okay we don't want that okay users windows downloads okay do I got it yeah I do okay okay I got it some plaster damage I guess they're on there there's plaster damage um, plaster damage plaster damage na, 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 na. let's throw that one just a, it's a, a variation um, oh well just for fun of it we'll throw on a uh, chip paint kind of thing there <laughs> okay and of course looking at my texture here which is big and awkward and difficult to get it over here uh, we can see that uh, we have the deformation on the bottom here and of course since it's a, a single texture it's going to want to tile across and uh, looking at this I can see that we're upside down okay so let's uh, fix that again rotate it and uh, sort of get in there we want to we want to consume as much of that texture as possible um, once again we didn't snag the texture okay so because because of the way the stack works we we place the UV map on the stack we drag and drop a texture onto it the UV mapper does not grab the current texture so we have to convert it back to edible poly which is the easy way to do it or we can you know go hunting for it but instead I just find it uh, as as a normal procedure to just mm, convert to uh, edible poly and then just redo it from scratch now as you can see we have have our our decay on the floor and uh, you know we'll also demonstrate uh, hopefully uh, a, a, the uh, the viewport feature where we can go in and we can start you know smudging up the floor a little bit to kind of tie everything in uh, as an overlap so it doesn't have this wall ends at the floor kind of effect uh, that's not a big fan of that okay um, let's go ahead and select all and convert everything to an edible poly and then what I'm going to do is I am hmm, will this work let's uh, unwrap this as one big mess Okay, this is pretty cool okay and then I'm going to select by element 
no, you know something, uh, I just, I am going to take that off. I'm going to leave that on as an instance, and I'm going to try open this up as individual individual uh, elements. And we're going to do a flip. There it goes, and we're going to scale that up. We should have our white plaster damaged. Nope, not that guy. Um, medium, this guy here. Okay, select scaling. Uh, how we're we doing on time? Uh, pretty good. As a matter of fact, we might actually get the entire base done. And then uh, we can move on to other things. This is going a lot better than I thought it would. Okay, so we open up the editor again. Um, are we flipped over here? There's hmm, something not right there for sure. Uh, okay, let's see if we can flip that and see what happens. Okay, that's not playing nice for some reason. Okay, uh, let's go Control A. Let's get out of that. C control A, and we'll com come on. Control A, and we'll convert this all over to an. Hey, oh, come on. Convert over to an elevable poly. We'll select this guy here, and we'll try our mapper again. See if it will, will behave. Let's see, we move that around. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I know why. I'm using a totally different type of material, different type of plaster. Uh, you know, um, I am going to use my prerogative, and I'm going to stick with uh, this guy as the base. as for a base to be able to blend everything. Um, the idea is, is to create that base. You know, it kind of it has a repeatable pattern to it. It looks exactly like someone had just dropped textures onto it. But we're going to add some blending effects. And as I said, we're going to be remapping. We're going to try various different approaches and ideas and not really restrict ourselves to just a single course. Yeah. The best time I find to think about it all is when I'm not actually sitting here doing this. Um, you know, I'm off at work or something like that and uh, I get it, you know, I get detached from it. it. You know, the last thing you want to do is get too, shall we say, emotionally attached to an idea. And uh, going for a walk, that works too. You know, just getting away from it. If you have to, yeah, getting a little frustrated with it, take a couple days off. Put it away, put it in a drawer somewhere, it ain't going nowhere. And by the time you come back to it, you're going to have, probably look at it with a fresh eye. Some of the things I think used to think, you know, oh, I did this, I did that. I thought, oh, this is this is so perfect, this is spectacular. And then a week later, I come back to it and I saw, you know, what the heck was I thinking? Okay, so that more or less gives us kind of a, a, a structure, a base to work with. Um... I would say I would say you know we're getting into that half an hour time spot that I like to keep, so um, let's just kind of review of what we got here. Yeah, we got uh, we got things kind of mapped out and so forth. Okay, uh, we obviously have a lot of tiling going on. What I'll probably end up doing is seeing if I can find something similar to kind of diffuse it. Um, how to, you know, to kind of avoid this habitual um, tiling that's going on. Uh, <coughs> okay, while we're still at it, uh, I'll just show you uh, a, a quick uh, a quick how to here as in we have our basic UV mapping layout we want to you know start introducing other texture types into it but obviously the, the overall texture volume space that we have say on a given wall is 
you know, it's not going to fit a lot of the textures that we may or may not want put to it. But we don't want to break, have to be breaking things out. Now, I like to break my maps out into separate objects to make it things a little bit more isolated, a little bit more manageable. But you do not need to do that. It's, it's you know, a lot of the techniques for UV mapping are in 3ds Max are similar, but done differently in, in Max. So say, for example, uh, with this selection here, I can select sub-object. As you can see, if I turn off and on and off the highlighting, we have this one surface selected. So say, for example, um, I want to make uh, a, a, you know, a bulkhead type of support system. So if I'm looking through my, looking through some, see if I can find uh, an interesting texture just to throw on there for, as an example. You can see here, uh, you know, I got to, uh, I, I added this directly to this surface area here. And uh, what I could do is with the sub object selection still set, I can go back to the editor and it's just going to extract this face into the editor. So with the editor up and I since I've added that texture before I added the UV mapper, it's going to show up in my editor map here. So I can say, for example, go over here and snag that and adjust it appropriately to the overall size of the map I have here. And uh, what type of texture map should you use? Uh, as big as you can get. I mean, um, 1024 by 1024 is a good working number because it is a power two and it falls, you know, it's something that the... Uh, hardware rendering of the engine can handle if it has to but if we're going to remap the textures anyways and you start working with 1024 by 1024 and you remap that to a smaller size and scale as part of the overall object that you've created you're going to start finding the you're going to squ be squishing things down a little too much um, outside of that limit so I hope that makes sense uh, it'll make sense once we get to uh, remapping the textures. Anyways, uh, I would say that we can sort of call this one uh, this one done, and uh, you know I'll get on to the next one. Hopefully by that time I'll come up with a few ideas of how I want to proceed, and uh, we'll just continue on mapping this uh, uh, this way until we have at least something that looks good. <laughs>